Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number eight from the Solomon E. Mechanics um, M1 paper. Uh, this is also question five from my end of topic worksheet number five, Forces and Friction. Um, and here we have a question about these particles which are connected together um, um, on this plane, one's hanging down here, it says figure 3 shows two particles A and B of mass 5M and 3M respectively attached to the ends of a light and extensible string of length 4 meters. The string passes over a smooth pulley which is fixed to the edge of a rough horizontal table. So this is rough, so there's friction acting here. 2 meters high. Particle A lies on the table at a distance of 3 meters from the pulley whilst particle B hangs freely over the edge of the table one meter above the ground. The coefficient of friction between A and the table is 3 over 20. The system is released from rest with the string taut. Show that the initial acceleration of the system is 9 over 32 g meters per second squared. Okay, so let's put all the forces acting in this diagram on these particles. So you have um, the weight acting vertically downwards from both of them. So for A, the weight is 5m. So this is 5, the mass is 5m, sorry. So this is 5mg is its weight. Let me just put that a bit neater. 5mg is its weight, 5mg. And for B, its uh, mass is 3m, so this is 3mg. You have the tension in the string pulling this along and this holding it up. And because this is a rough plane, all right, so we're going to consider the reaction force because that will be needed. That's the reaction force because it's in contact with the surface. And as I said, it's a rough plane, so you're going to have friction which reaches its maximum value because there's going to be an acceleration. So of course this will accelerate towards the ground, so it's this direction, and this will have the same magnitude of acceleration towards the pulley. Okay, so we have drawn the forces on these objects, so let's make the equations of motion for them. So if I consider B first, because it looks a bit simpler, okay, B is going to go towards the ground, so I'll take down as positive. So I have 3mg minus t, if you look at the, the, the resultant force, is 3mg minus t, which is equal to the mass times acceleration. We're using F equals ma here. F equals ma. So the resultant force is 3mg acting down minus t acting up equals the mass, which is 3m times acceleration, which is a. So that is um, the equation of motion for the first particle b. And then for particle a, a is going to be moving in this direction, which looks like to the right in our diagram. So I'm going to say that t minus the friction, t minus f max is equal to its mass, which is 5m times a. 5m a. So what we need to do is to find f max. To find f max, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take particle a and I'm going to um, resolve the forces vertically. So I have r is equal to 5mg. So I know that r is equal to 5mg. Okay, so now I know that f is f max is equal to mu times r. And we're told that mu is equal to 3 over 20. Okay, so I can work out what f max is. So I can say, um, therefore, f max is equal to 3 over 20 times 5 mg. 5 capital mg. So that's going to give me 15 over 2 mg. Oh, 3 over 20, sorry. What am I doing? I forgot the zero there. So it's 3 over 4 mg, sorry. So f max is 3, that cancels with that, gives you 3 over 4, 3 over 4 times mg. That's f max. So now I can um, make this equation here. Um, this equation is going to become t minus 3 quarters mg is equal to 5 ma. So this is my equation 1 here, and this is now my equation 2. And these two equations together will um, help me find A. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add equation 1 and 2 together. That will eliminate the t's because you have minus t plus t. So you have 3mg plus minus 3 quarters mg 
is equal to 3ma plus 5ma, which is 8ma. So now we can see that the m is common to all the three terms. So I can get rid of the m and I can, I've got 3g minus 3 quarters g equals 8a. Now 3g minus 3 quarters g, that's like um, 12g over 4 minus 3 over 4g equals 8a. That's 9 over 4g equals 8a. Therefore, a is going to be, if I divide both sides by 8, 4, 8 to 32, so 9 over 32, g is the acceleration meters per second squared. And I think that's exactly what we had to show. Yes, it is, 9 over 32 g meters per second squared. Okay, so that's part um, a done. Now we're going to go on to part b. Okay, now part b says, find in terms of g the speed of a immediately before b hits the ground. So the speed of A as B hits the ground, just before it's the ground, will be the same speed of B. They'll have the same speed because they're connected together with this light string. So when B hits the ground, it will have the same speed as A as just before B hits the ground. So if we cal calculate the speed of B as it hits the ground, that's the same speed of A, okay, at that point. So let's let's consider B. We have, we know the acceleration with which it's moving, which is nine over 32 G. We know um, the distance it's falling, B is one meter just before it hits the ground. We know its initial speed is zero. We have to find what V is. We don't know what T is. So we got S, U, V, and A. So we can use V, v squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we say V squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 9 over 32G times 1. Okay, so V squared is going to be, that's going to give me, um, that counts with that, 16. So you get 9 over 16G. Therefore, V is equal to, we can say, G times the square root of, well, actually, the square root of 9 over 16 is 3 quarters. So we can say that's 3 quarters times root G. 3 over 4 times the square root of G. We can write it like that, which is, that's an exact form that might help us. So that's going to give us um, 0 0.75, oops, 0 0.7, what's not, point's not working, 0.75 times the square root of 9.8, which gives us uh, 2.3478, 2.3478, dot, dot, dot. So that means V is equal to 2.35 meters per second. So we can say the speed of A as B hits the ground just before B hits the ground, is equal to 2.35 meters per second. Okay, which we can say in exact form is 3 quarters times root G, which you might need later on. Okay, so that's the speed of A as B hits the ground. So that's part B done of this question. Now we're going to go on to part C. Now part C says when B hits the ground, um, it, con it comes to rest and the string becomes slack. Calculate how far the particle A is from the pulley when it comes to rest. So basically, when B hits the ground, A has moved one meter. Okay, A has moved one meter along because B moved one meter, A moved one meter across because B is pulling A. Now, once B hits the ground, it comes to rest and the string becomes slack. So now the tension in the string is gone. So now what's happening, A is moving along, okay, and... It's moving along and there's no actual force um, pulling it along now. It's just going on its own um, you know, as it was moving before, right? So the only force acting on it now is the friction force that's pulling back. The tension in the string now is gone. Now there's no tension in the string. The string is now slack. So the only force is the F max acting on it that way. And it has a mass of 5 m 
um, kilograms, right? So the only force acting in it is, is this direction. So if we resolve the forces in the direction it's moving, it's, it's moving in this direction. Okay, let's try to find what acceleration it has. It will be a deceleration, actually, because it's going to come to rest. All right, so that's after B has hit the ground. It's already moved one meter, and then it's going to move another uh, um, amount. It's going to move another distance, which we're going to call S, and then it's going to come to rest because it's only force acting on it is in this direction. Okay, so you've got minus F max is equal to the mass times acceleration. Okay, the mass times the acceleration. So F max, as we worked out in the last question, was um, F max was what? What was it? We worked it in part A, I think. F max was three quarters mg. That's F max. So F max is three quarters of mg. So we know that F max, this would be negative three quarters mg is equal to five ma. So we can work out what the acceleration will be. The acceleration, the m's will cancel. You've got minus 3 over 20 g meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of this particle now in this new situation here. So we want to find the distance it moves for it to come to rest under this deceleration. So we have s is what we have to find. u is the speed it was traveling at at the point when it, uh, the string became slack. The string became slack when b hit the ground when b hit the ground a was moving at a speed which we just found in this question which is uh, i'll write it as three quarters root g to keep it exact three quarters root g three quarters times root g meters per second s we have to find v you want to find when it comes to rest so that's going to be zero and a is the acceleration or the deceleration we could say three over 20 g negative and t we don't know so we want to find what S is. We have S, U, V, A. So again, we could use V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S. This time we know V is 0. So that's 0 squared, which is 0. And U squared is going to be 3 quarters times root G squared plus 2 times A, which is minus 3 over 20 G times S, which is what, what we have to find. So this is going to give me 0 equals, that's going to be 9 over 16 G. And that's going to give me here minus 3 over 10 G times S. So we have 9 over 16 G. Okay, equals 3 over 10 um, G times S. The G's cancel out. So we're left with S equals 9 over 16 divided by 3 over 10. We could say divide both sides by 3. 3 over 10, or we could multiply by 10 and divide by 3. We'll do it that way. It's, it's probably better. So the, the, the G's cancel out, and I can say S is equal to 9 times 10 over 3 times 16. So that's going to give me 3. So it's 30 over 16, which is, we can say 30 over 16, which is 15 over 8. So S is equal to 15 divided by 8 which leaves me with 1.875 meters, 1.875 meters. So the question tells us to find how far the particle A is from the pulley when it comes to rest. So A has moved one meter for when B hit the ground. That's one meter. Then it has moved another 1.875 meters, 1.875 meters when it came to rest. And the total distance it is away from the pulley is 3 meters. So what we've got to find is how far it is away from the pulley, which is this here. So we can say this, the distance from the pulley, the distance from the pulley is going to be equal to 3 meters minus 2.875. 2.875, which gives us, so we have, add another one to that. That's 2.875, so 3 minus the answer gives us 1 eighth, which is 0 0.125 meters. That's the answer to that question there. That's part C, how far uh, A is from the pulley when it comes to rest. So what did we do here? First of all, we know that it moved 1 meter as B was falling. Once B hit the ground, the acceleration now changes because it's not being pulled by anything. The only force acting on it is the friction. So therefore, it's going to decelerate until it comes to rest. And that deceleration is given by 
um, the friction, um, the, res the, the resultant force of the friction equals the mass times acceleration. So you find minus three quarters mg equals five m a. That's the acceleration in this new situation here. We know uh, we want to find how far it moves. We know that the initial speed point when b hit the ground. That's how fast that is moving. We want to f we want to find the distance it travels until it comes to rest. So v zero. We know the the deceleration, and therefore we can use this formula. And there we have our answer in the end: zero point one two five meters the distance from the pulley. Okay, 3 minus 2.875. So that concludes this question, uh, part C of question. Um, this is, I think, question 8 from the Solomon E paper, which is question 5. Is it question 8? I can't remember. Let me just check. Yeah, it's question 8 from the Solomon E paper and question 5 from my end of topic worksheet, which um, I put this question in on forces of friction. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this particular Solomon paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from um, the worksheet, Forces of Friction, you can find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.